Hey, this is Zach Human, and you're watching Quest TV. I'm Kevin Chuka, and this is Quest.TV. We're here at the Raw Spirit Festival in sunny Sedona, Arizona, and we're nestled here amongst the beautiful red rocks um, at the Radisson El Diablo Resort. And this is the Saturday, and there's a lot of great stuff going on. Over here, over my left shoulder, you can see we have the Raw Spirit main stage. We have a musical performer at the moment. And there's a lot of workshops going on here, and music going on throughout the day and through the evening. And uh, everybody seems to be having a great time. And if we pan over here to the right, we can see that uh, we have a dome over here. And this is another workshop area where um, we can get a little sneak peek inside. You can see everybody sitting there waiting for the next workshop leader to, uh, to appear. So we're having a great time here. There's lots of people, two, 3,000 people. Great food, great atmosphere, great energy. And I'm Kevin Schuker, and I'm having a great time here at the Roll Spirit Festival. Y'all can hear us okay? Good. Um, well, I'm Jackie, and this is Gideon, my husband. Uh, Good morning, Graf everybody. is our Good last morning. name. Uh, we're from outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and we started doing uh, raw food basically 10 or 11 years ago. I'd say 11 yeah. years ago. Uh, let me go get the, the picture. Of yeah, yes. No, we use the entire vanilla bean. Oh, and dry it? Uh, we don't dry it. We just put it in like it comes. Oh. They come sort of uh, pliable. A little bit pliable. They, they'll blend up good. You'd be surprised. Yeah, just put... Yes. What was your combination? How much the groats come in? A half, a half a cup of the groats and five vanilla beans. And that'll work for any, in any recipe that calls for a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. That'll work. And... And you do it in the Vitamix, and you can keep it in your refrigerator, it lasts forever. So it's, it's a good way of uh, getting, because vanilla is a wonderful flavor. Uh, I think it's a medicinal flavor. Actually, the drug companies were putting it in, um, they were putting in medications. Uh, they, they had actually brought up 80% of the vanilla crops, and because what they found is the vanilla made the medicines work better. Of course, as drug companies uh, do, they found they created their own ingredient that did the same thing, supposedly, that the vanilla did. So um, I think it makes everything in our body work better. You know, it just, uh, it's been used for thousands of years, vanilla has. And it was actually, you know, um, traded at one time. So okay. good spice. Uh, let's make the pie crust. Okay. And we have the... Uh, all the nuts in there and the dates, and we'll mix it together. There's also some honey that goes into that mixture, but we add the honey at the end because if I added the honey now, it would gum the whole thing and it would be very hard to process. So I'm processing this. <laughs> and you want to process it so it starts to stick together, which will start sort of gumming up on the side and folding in. You don't want to over process it because if you do the oil will start coming out. If you end up with a real greasy oily crust it just means that you've processed it too much. Yes? Uh, it would actually blend it up too much. Now what you could do is uh, it would be impossible in the vitamins. <laughs> but, you know, uh, food processors are some are very inexpensive. Yeah, they're a pretty. A really good one that uh, we like, uh, we recommend actually the Kitchen Aid, the 12 cup Kitchen Aid is the best one that's available in the market uh -huh. now. But uh, you can get a really cheap one for forty dollars. Will do the same results. You can find them a lot of time in Goodwill. A good I, I found them all the time. In fact, I, that's sort of my hobby. I go around and buy up. Food processors, you know, two, three dollars, because there are people that can't afford them, and so that, that I, then I pass them on to people. So, a food processor is probably one of the cheapest things in your kitchen. I get one; yeah. it'll save you a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, when you take a little bit of the crust and press it together, and it holds, the, the dates are sticking in. 
so that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add the honey. Is there a reason why you grind the almond first and then you put the Yes, on? yeah. If uh, the uh, She wanted to know uh, why we would grind the almonds first. The almonds are much harder to grind up, and if we put them all in there together, we would actually overprocess the walnuts and the pecans, and the, and the almonds wouldn't be ground up enough. So we're actually making them into a flour, and then our other nuts are not chopped up completely. Uh, somebody asked me one time, why wouldn't you use wet nuts and then dehydrate it? Well, if you've ever tried to put wet nuts into a food processor, it ends up to be a paste. It's actually a pate. So we don't want to make a pate. We want to have a little texture in our crust. Um, and you said you like the KitchenAid, which is what I have. Did yes. you like the 12-cup KitchenAid? Yes, I love it. Are? Yes. Oh, I think it's uh, better. It has several features about it. It comes with four blades. Uh, and it's, the price is great. We can get it for $179 for people. And it's, uh, so if you're in the market to get a, a KitchenAid, I, I don't say, we sell only things that I really believe in. It's not like we're just selling this. Um, I, I really believe that it's a better food processor. Yeah, that's fine. If that's working for you. Well, let us know. Okay, yeah. let's finish the pie crust. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps things moving along, right? <laughs> well, that's my job. Okay, you want to make sure the honey is mixed in well right. here. And the honey, now you could leave the honey out and just add more dates. Now, you notice this makes, a, and we're making this out on a tray. Say if you were having a big party, you're going for Thanksgiving all the relatives are there, there are about 40 people, I would say put this out on a tray instead of in pie plates because you can cut it into little squares and serve it that way. So uh, since we have a large crowd, we're going to do it this way. We're going to spread our crust out. And you see, wearing gloves to do this is really, is really a good idea because up. it's sticky. You already said that? The yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the honey didn't get quite mixed up, but that's okay. We're going to mix it by hand. Yes. Well, it's, you can use any date. We just, I like the, it's very sweet. You know, if you're going to add sweetness to something, you want a, a really sweet, uh, and I'm, the jewel dates are pretty easy to find out there. Now, be sure and pitch your dates. I don't know whether we mentioned that. The pits are the pits. <laughs> so we're just going to spread this around and press it into the side. You don't want to have too much around your corners here, although people love the crust. Uh, and this crust, now there are other things you can do. If you'll do this, I'm going to describe another little side recipe. You can take this crust and have your children make balls out of it. Balls about so big. And then you take pumpkin and just grate it with a real fine grater, uh, something that grates it very, very fine. Then you roll those little balls in the grated pumpkin till they get orange. And then you take pumpkin seeds and you stick one on top and one on each side for ears and then one for here for eyes and one for a mouth. It looks like and a Mickey Mouse. It, no, it looks like a little pumpkin. <laughs> 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 and so this could be pumpkin treats for Halloween instead of, you know, handing out bad stuff. I, so that's a side I recipe. I have to say that the kids in our neighborhood don't come for trick or treat to our house. I mean, <laughs> we don't even bother turning the light on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we start, you know, we quit handing out candy. We start handing out boxes of raisins, and it's like, yeah, okay, don't, don't go to that house anymore. Don't go here, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No candy. Okay, so that's our pie crust already done, and yeah. now we're going to do the pumpkin pie filling. So this is a pumpkin pie pumpkin. Uh, you can see it's the little ones that you can see in the mm -hmm. stores. The big ones are not really all that great for uh, eating raw. And, uh, they don't have quite as much flavor. No. A lot of, a lot more water. Are these peeled? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. We have part of it already done. Just show them how to do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you take the seeds out of the pumpkin, and you can do it after you cut it. You take the knife. It's easier to peel when you cut it into segments. It's pretty hard, but once you cut it in half, it gets easier. And you need a, a good kitchen knife to do this. And then I can cut, cut the seeds out of it. 
Now, you can the pumpkin, I mean, the seeds in here are pumpkin seeds. You know, so you can dry them up and... Uh, <laughs> As if you didn't have <laughs> Squash seeds. <laughs> yeah. So you can uh, dry them out and actually... Uh, but they're the same, uh, the same pumpkin inside. seeds that you, you know, buy already shelled. And pumpkin seeds are great. They're very high in zinc. It's supposed to be very good for the prostate. I, I think it's good to soak all your nuts and seeds. They all come with enzyme inhibitors on them. And those enzyme inhibitors inhibit the enzymes that help to digest those. So it's because they become more of a digestive challenge if they haven't been soaked. And you know, we're, what we're trying to do with, by eating raw is to not have challenges for our body period. And so digestion is really one of the biggest t sources of uh, removing energy from our bodies is digestion. You know, a cooked food diet you take about 80%, uh, it takes about 80% of your energy just to digest that. So when you go to a raw food diet, it takes about 30%. So you're there, that's why people, the first thing they experience is an increase in energy. It just takes less energy. Uh, so this is, again, that's more energy to digest the food. So this is why we soak everything. You know, but you know, if you're somewhere where you can't soak something, it's not gonna hurt you to eat a few nuts unsoaked. Yeah, and when you yeah. actually when you soak and dehydrate the uh, pumpkin seeds, uh, they're gonna smell a little bit like uh, seafood. You're gonna have uh, a sort of a fishy smell. A fishy <laughs> smell to it. It's not because they're bad, but they're so high in omega three fatty acid, and that's the kind mm -hmm. of smell that you get from omega three. Actually, fish don't smell like fish because they are born like that. It's because of the food they eat. They eat yeah. algae, which is very high in omega-3, and that gives them that kind of smell. Uh, when you will grind yeah. the flaxseed, for instance, freshly ground flaxseed, smell it close, and it will smell like fish. So yeah, that's the omega yeah and the same thing is true with us. We smell like what we eat. You know, <laughs> if you've been around a bunch of meat eaters, we, we all know, you know, there's, a d and animals sense that in us, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, animals, uh, Jackie can go out on the deck and birds would come and sit on their shoulder. Oh, but come on. <laughs> he's exaggerating a little I, I bit. Said, I said they can. I didn't say they oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So when we were mixing this up earlier, see I quit using my other Vitamix and our, uh, this one didn't quite work. So what we're gonna do is chop up some of the, the pumpkin in the, food, in the food processor. So it's chopped up and I'll show you, uh, it's, it's sort of a drag on it. Yes. Oh. A, a Vitamix is when you want things blended up completely, and a food processor is when you want to chop, slice, or grate. Does that, does that sort of simplify it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really, your, you don't have to have a food processor. I mean, you can use hand tools that chop, slice, and grate, but it's so much quicker with a food processor. So. Yeah, one of the essential things you want to do with raw food is save time. Anything mm -hmm. that, you, I mean, there's time consuming making raw food. So. Any tool or machine or hand tool or a helper that will make it easier for right. you to do it, it always do it. So I'm going to put the soaked dates in here with the water, blend those. <laughs> blend those up well. Then I'm going to add my uh, macadamia nuts and these have been soaked. So they're nice and easy. This is actually my cream substitute. Let's pour off that water. I use uh, the macadamia nuts for me are uh, my dairy substitute. Now a lot of raw, uh, raw chefs would still use cashew nuts mm -hmm. uh, for creaming uh, things and for pre-application. We quit using them as soon as we heard that uh, cashews are not raw. And uh, we just been to Belize a few uh, months ago, and this was cashew season. So we kind of went to see how it's made and so on. And there is no such thing as raw cashew. Uh, the cashew is a gel inside of a very toxic pod. And it needs to be heated just to get it out of the pod. And then, you know, it's like uh, mm -hmm. the white of an egg. Unless you cook it, it's not going to be a hard-boiled egg. And it's not going to be a cashew nut unless you heat it up. 
So, um, you know, some people are selling cashews that they, you know, they say raw, and I don't know what kind of process they, they are going through to make a cashew that will be still raw. But the usual cashews that you buy in the store that says raw cashews have been cooked at high heat. So They haven't been roasted. So what they're, see the, the food industry, they don't, they don't uh, know what's really raw and what's cooked. You know, they, so they say anything that's not roasted is raw. Pine nuts, what about them? Yeah. They're good. Pine we use good. pine nuts. Yeah, yeah we use, use pine nuts. Do you soak your yeah. pine nuts? Soak my pine nuts, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about saving time. Do you ship your um, gourmet foods? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, you go to our website, sproutproofood.org, and click on shipping, and you can order stuff for the menu. What yeah. is your website? Uh, sproutrawfood.org. Great. We should have put it on the. Okay. Well, I'm going to blend up the macadamia. <laughs> Avocado is there for uh, added fat and creaminess to well, the pumpkin it's, pie. It's, this is my butter. I would have added butter before. So this is my butter. So, the, you know, you can use uh, your foods as uh, substitutes. And you might not know about it, but you can also blend your avocado pit oh. in soups. And uh, even in here you could. We don't do it because it may make it a little gritty. And here we're trying to accomplish a really creamy, creamy smooth. consistency. But when we make like vegetable soups and so on with avocado in it, we will blend the avocado pit. Mm -hmm. And it has the kind of fiber in it that usually can fi be found in oatmeal. Yeah. And it's a it's soluble a fiber. Good, it's a soluble fiber. It's very good for us. Yeah. And I think we should be eating uh, the foods whole as much as we can. Now, I haven't, uh, I don't like the avocado uh, skins, but animals, uh, dogs love those. I know a lot of people that feed the, those to the dogs. Uh, so I'm going to add the vanilla powder. Now you could, since we're blending it in here, you could add just a, a piece of a vanilla bean could be added to this because you're going to blend it all up. And I'm going to put a little, uh, this is some cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, macadamias are my dairy. So they'll make my sour cream. They make my cheeses. Uh, they make... Um, cream cheese, so all from macadamias and pine nuts. I, so I really don't use them in any other way in dishes, but they're my dairy substitute. Actually, we, get, uh, we buy some uh, macadamia nuts, we bring them home, we put them in water, soak them, and stick them in the freezer. Because if we just leave them out, we're going to snack on them. Yeah. And they're 90% fat. Yeah. They're 90% fat, and they don't taste very good frozen and wet, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> because I've tried them in that way. <laughs> Sorry? For eight hours, yeah. and then you drain them and you put them in a container in the freezer. Yeah. That way, you're only going to be using them in recipe. You're not going to be snacking on them. Yeah. It works for us. Okay, this is uh, some ginger and a little bit of sea salt. And we got some honey here. The honey is really thick and difficult to get out. Yeah. But uh, uh, as far as honey, you know, vegans don't like to use honey because they say that animal abuse is involved in it and so on. And, and some growers do, but uh, almost every neighborhood would have some beekeepers in it. Uh, there's no zoning laws uh, about beekeeping. You can, keep, you can keep a hive if you want on your yard. Uh, people have bees on high rises in New York City. So, and, and we have to support the beekeepers yeah. because I tell you what, without bees, no we will have no food. No fruits, no vegetables. Stop dripping honey all over the vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to put part of this in here, yeah. and then Gideon's going to chop up some. In the yeah, to make it easier on the Vitamix, we'll just chop some of these mm -hmm. in here. 
into little pieces. And that's just. Uh, no, uh, nutmeg, I'm sorry. Nutmeg. Did I say cloves? I'm sorry. I meant nutmeg. Yeah. Wait a minute. Honey, uh, uh, we're question. We're going. We got to keep moving, he said. I'll answer after the class. I'll tell you what, if y'all volunteers would start passing out the uh, pumpkin pie recipe. That's good. Give me some of that. Yeah, I think this would be good. Pull this. So see, I've chopped up some of this. And you could even save a little bit of this and sprinkle it on the top. Just another little idea. As you can see, this mixture is a little too thick for this. I'm going to add just a little bit more water. I'll tell you what, if y'all volunteers would start passing out the uh, pumpkin pie recipe. Yeah, I think this would be good. Pull this. So see, I've chopped up some of this. And you could even save a little bit of this and sprinkle it on the top. Just another little idea. As you can see, this mixture is a little too thick for this. I'm going to add just a little bit more water. strain on the machine. So I've gotten it ground up. I'm going to add a little bit of psyllium now. All right. All mixed up. Okay, so we take it out and put it in the pan. So see, it's a pretty thick mixture, and this is... Uh, could be a challenge. It is a challenge for this one. Now, Jackie, since pine nuts and macadamia nuts are the most expensive, could yeah. you substitute Brazil nuts? Would it work for that? Uh, they don't cream up quite as the same, yeah. and they don't have that dairy flavor quite the same. You can substitute, but it's going to probably change the recipe a little bit. But try it. If it works, email me and tell me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you don't really make a pumpkin pie every day of the week. So if it's a little bit expensive, so it's a, it's a special food for special occasion. 